Hey everybody, Tim with Perkins Roofing here, and today we're gonna to talk about the different toppings on a sloped roof. And now sloped roof is defined as a roof that has a two on 12 slope or greater. And generally you're gonna find three different topping layers on a sloped roof. The first and most common, especially up north, you'll find is a shingle roof. So this is what a shingle looks like. There's a couple layer of shingles when they're not staggered. So shingle is the most common, especially up north. Down here in South Florida, there's a lot of tile. So you see behind me, we have all kinds of different tiles in our yard. We have clay tiles here, concrete tiles. This is a clay barrel tile or a ridge for a uh, clay S tile like right here. And then this is a concrete S tile. You can see S because it's like the shape of an S. And we also have behind me a bunch of flat tiles as well. There's concrete flat tiles back here. So those are our tile roof. And then last is the metal roof. So between the three toppings, you generally have shingle right here, tile and metal. And so every single topping, whether a shingle tile or metal has different pros and cons because you could just think, okay, metal is definitely better than shingles. But if that was the case, everybody would have a metal roof. That's not the case. Um, so they each have different pros and cons, which we'll go into this video and talk about all the pros and cons of concrete tile, clay tile, shingles, and metal roofs. So the first type of slope roof we're gonna talk about is a shingle roof, which the biggest pro of a shingle roof is that it's cost effective. This here is architectural shingle and uh, the shingles are definitely the most cost effective of uh, shingle versus tile versus metal for slope roof. Uh, there are different types of shingles, so each one is gonna be at a different price point. We personally like to use certain tea uh, as our shingle of choice, um, but it's gonna be more cost effective than a tile or roof and a metal roof if you go with the shingles. Regardless if you go with the three tab, the architectural shingles, or you add a secondary water barrier. Additionally, putting on a shingle roof is going to have a lower cost for repairs and maintenance in the future. So maybe 10 years down the road, you have a roof leak. That roof leak is gonna be cheaper to fix if it's a shingle roof than a tile roof because you can fix a shingle roof pretty easily in one day. You can remove shingles, remove the underlayment, change wood, make the repair, change the wood, whatever you need to do, put the underlayment back and put the shingles back all in the same day. But if you have a tile roof, you can't put the tiles back in the same day because per uh, South Florida's code, we have to put the tiles back with foam and the foam will not set on top of wet bowl or on top of a uh, waterproofing product that we put down to stop the leak on the underlayment. Now, as far as cons with the shingle roof, you have to remember that these shingles here are made with asphalt. That's the primary ingredient. Now there's a little bit of copper in there, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I'm not a chemist and I don't remember the exact consistency uh, that they teach us in the class, which they may remember, but these asphalt shingles will bake in the South Florida sun. So that is the primary reason why shingles in South Florida won't last 25 or a lifetime as they say up north uh, years because these shingles are just gonna get destroyed in the sun. They're getting baked by the sun. They're gonna get uplifted by wind. They have trees, that uh, coconut trees and stuff like that, palm trees that are gonna drop stuff on them and degrade them faster. So there's a lot of things that can happen in South Florida that's gonna make these asphalt shingles not last as long as they do up north. One thing that can help with the life of the shingles lasting longer is selecting a lighter color. So the darker colors is, are gonna attract more sunlight. The lighter colors are gonna attract less sunlight and they're gonna reflect more sunlight off of the roof. So I recommend picking a lighter color, even though some of the dark colors like dark browns and stuff can look pretty good. I recommend picking a lighter shingle because it's going to make the roof last longer and it's also going to save you some money and utilities. One of the obvious drawbacks is a shingle roof versus a tile roof is it's just not as pretty. You look at these nice tiles here and imagine that your roof is, has, is full of tiles and then look at the shingle roof and the tile roof just looks a lot more classy. 
It looks nicer, it's more beautiful than the shingle roof. Now from my experience and from what I've seen in the roofing industry, the average roof life in South Florida of a shingle roof is about 12 to 17 years. And that's talking about a three tab shingle roof. Architectural shingles on the other hand can last a few years more. So usually an architectural shingle will last between 15 and 20 years. And you can add to that roof life of the architectural shingles by adding a secondary water barrier. And I've seen some shingle roofs that have a secondary water barrier and our architectural shingles last close to 25 years here in South Florida, which is about what you're gonna get out of a tile roof. And that's pretty good bang for your buck, if you're asking me. So shingle roof repairs will be cheaper than tile roof repairs, but you'll also have more shingle roof repairs in the time frame to deal with and tile roof repairs, and you'll also likely be re-roofing at a sooner rate, unless you go all out and get the secondary water barrier and get the architectural shingles and pay for all the upgrades, which is gonna bring you closer to the tile and price anyway. Now, it won't get all the way to the same price as a tile roof, but you have to weigh these options when you're considering what type of sloped roofing cap is best for you. So pros of a tile roof. The biggest pro is that it's probably the best looking roof. Now, when you talk about how pretty a roof is or how good looking a roof is, that's all gonna be subjective based on who's saying what. So um, in most people's opinions though, a tile roof is gonna look better than a shingle or a metal roof. A lot of people do like the metal look though because it's more modern and industrial. So that's something to keep in mind. And it depends on the type of building structure as well. Maybe if you have a warehouse or a, uh, dock like like a shed or a dock or something of some sorts maybe a metal roof is what you want or if you have a mo very modern style looking home then you want that if you have a spanish style looking home then obviously you're going to want to go with the tile tiles also more durable than shingles and it's going to get a longer roof life so you have concrete tile and clay tile are the most common types of tile you also have metal tiles but that's i categorize as a metal roofing system rather than a tile roofing system and so do uh, Florida building codes. So concrete versus clay. Concrete tile is not gonna last as long as clay tile. Usually concrete tile will last somewhere between 20 to 25 years. And the reason that clay tile is gonna last longer, which I usually say 25 to 30 years when someone asks me about the roof life of clay tile, is an absorption rate of moisture. Now concrete is gonna absorb somewhere around 15 to 20% of the moisture hitting the concrete tiles. Whereas clay, depending on the grade of clay, can absorb somewhere between like two to 8% usually. So you're looking at less than half of the absorption of moisture that's going down into the tile and that's gonna to be touching the paper underneath. So the paper is what actually keeps the roof waterproof, whereas the tile is just like a uh, protective barrier that is protecting the paper from the sun and from coconuts or whatever is gonna fall on the roof. So the tile is more like a shield, whereas it's like a shield that deflects like blunt force trauma, whereas the underlayment is the shield that is going to deflect moisture and wick moisture away. So you want the shield that's gonna affect uh, trauma to stop anything that's gonna damage the bottom shield that's gonna affect uh, moisture and deflect the moisture away. So talking about tiles, there's also slate tile, which we don't see much of, especially down here. You might see more of it up north, but it's gonna last longer. People don't do slate usually because it's very expensive. I think we've only done one slate roof in almost 10 years of my time roofing here at Perkins Roofing. It's like with the shingle roof, you can add years onto your roof life of a tile roof by adding a secondary water barrier. So the underlayment, the reason that a secondary water barrier helps is you're adding millage to the roof and different underlayments are gonna have different millage. Our standard is a TU plus, which is an 80 mil uh, water barrier whereas other people might have uh, less than, they can have 60 mil water barriers that they're using, which is why you wanna find out what water barrier your roofer is using before you hire just uh, this guy or that guy to do your roof, make sure you're getting apples to apples. We use the 80 mil TU plus, and then um, the upgrade option would be a MTS secondary water barrier, which is another 60 mils on top of that. We also offer an upgrade option of doing a flint plastic uh, underlayment, which I believe is 120 mils. So the TU plus and the MTS together is 140 mils. So it's thicker, but the flint elastic is only one layer and that's 120 mils. So this is something you wanna keep in mind when considering the roof life. 
So a secondary water barrier, if you add the MTS, you get a 30 year warranty on the underlayment. So that means that your roof should last at least 30 years. So your roof can last 30 to 35 years. So you might be paying a little bit more, but you could be adding about 10 years to your roof life if you add that secondary water barrier, which is worth it in the long run if you're gonna be owning that home. There are also crazy tiles uh, that will have like 75 year warranties like Ludoisi. I've seen Ludoisi roof tiles that are over 100 years old that we've taken off of homes and reused them because they're so good. Like you can see me here standing on top of this tile. I can stand on this, I can jump on this and this Ludoisi tile will not break. If I stand on any other type of tile like this and bounce around, it's gonna break. So almost like anything else in life, what you pay for is what you're gonna get. If you wanna pay the big money for the Ludoisi tiles, maybe you can get a 75 to 100 year uh, roof, but how long are you going to be living in the home? These are things you need to weigh when you're considering what kind of tile. You need to see uh, what you like as far as look when you consider your tile. And uh, figure out if you want to do a secondary water barrier, which is not a standard quote item. Uh, we put it as an option on our quotes, but other people generally do not because then it makes the price look more expensive when it's an optional uh, item. It's not necessary per code. Cons of tile roofs is that they can be pretty expensive because you can't do the repair in one day. Most of the time with a tile roof, you have to take the tiles off. You have to take the underlayment out. You have to change the wood. You have to replace the underlayment. And then you have usually wet roofing cement that needs time to cure before you can put the tiles back, which is gonna increase the cost of a tile repair versus a shingle repair. Because with the shingle repair, you can put the shingles right back because it's also asphalt. So you've got asphalt and asphalt. You can't mix the 3M foam with the asphalt. It won't cure or bond properly. So you need to come back a second day to put the tiles back. And the tiles are more time consuming than just nailing shingles in. So um, that's why a tile repair can cost more than a shingle repair. And also that is uh, not including the material prices. Uh, tiles are more expensive than shingles. So just replacing any broken tiles that get broken when you're doing the repair. Uh, is going to be more expensive than nailing a couple rows of shingles in. So more cons about tiles are they have the highest cost per year. If you break down, if you take a spreadsheet and you break down shingles, tile, metal, and you put how many years of each roofing type you're going to get and the total price, generally your tile is going to be the highest price per year when you consider uh, how many years you're going to be out of the roof of shingle versus metal versus tile. So go ahead and make a spreadsheet, get prices for all three and break them down yourself and see how much each one per year would be costing you to find out uh, what you wanna do for your home. We already discussed this a little bit, but the last uh, biggest con that I have of tile roofing is the concrete tile absorption versus the clay tiles. So you just have to factor absorption rates in when you're considering if you wanna go with tiles and what type of tiles because metal is obviously not absorbing any moisture at all. The metal is just wick, or the water is just wicking straight off the metal. It's not gonna absorb any water at all. So metal roofs are your most durable type of roofing system. That's obviously a pro. Um, it's going to depend on what type of metal that you put on top of the roof, just like with tile, on how many years you can get out of the roofing system. And it's also gonna depend on your location and proximity to salt water. If you are in the middle of the country, a metal roof is going to last a lot longer than if you're living on an island and you've got salt water hitting your roof, especially depending on what type of metal you put on your roof. So you can install the most standard types of metal roofing is galvanized kynar coated steel, aluminum, or copper. I have seen copper. Um, they're not very standard, but um, somewhere like on the coast, a copper roof is gonna last a good deal longer than any other type of roofing system, or a stainless steel roof, which is also very rare. So copper and stainless steel roofing systems might last 50 plus years, even on the salt water, like in a salt water environment. Whereas in a salt water environment like South Florida, steel is usually gonna last like 25 years, but you have to be 1,000 feet away from salt water in order to install a steel system uh, for most warranties. And aluminum, which aluminum will usually last somewhere around 35 years. Um, so steel is usually 25 to 35 and aluminum might be 35 to 50 years. 
but also the proximity to salt water is going to uh, decide the duration of the metal. And then also the quality of the install. If you have exposed fasteners or a bad install with openings, then your system is not gonna last as long. And there are different panel types as well. But down here, the most common panel types you're gonna see is like the key style, which is called 5V crimp, and also a standing seam metal. So 5D crimp is like an exposed fastener, the key style where you put your panels down and then you have your screws with washers on top. And then the uh, standing seam is going to be where the panel clips over on top of another panel. Now I only have one panel, here's an example to show you, but I'll show you some overhead views of what the roofs look like that you can imagine. But you can see here, this end is going to clip on top of this end and you're gonna have clips underneath. So the the clips are gonna be underneath this seam right here, and that's gonna hide the screws from being exposed to the elements above the roofing system. Now, one mistake a lot of people make with metal roofs, especially with 5D crimp and exposed fasteners, is they'll use the wrong fasteners. I can make a lot of money down on the keys by uh, resealing or uh, taking out galvanized fasteners out of aluminum panels and then putting in stainless steel fasteners. When the original roofer should have put stainless steel fasteners anyway, but they were trying to cut corners by using the cheaper screws, which doesn't really cost that much, but it's just the quality of roofer you hire on if they're gonna do the job right or not. Metal roofs are gonna be your most efficient long-term. Um, even though you're spending way more money down, it's gonna be, you're probably not gonna have any repairs, especially if you hire someone good to do it right and they don't use the wrong screws or whatnot and they don't have gaps in the system and stuff like that and they make sure they put their butyl tape, you're probably not gonna have problems. But um, if you don't hire the right person, then the metal roof is still gonna be the most cost effective when it comes to repairs and maintenance because usually it's just gonna be some liquid applied repair or some caulking on some screws, something very simple. Um, you're not going to have to take out tiles and replace metal and whatnot um, unless you have hurricanes that may damage panels then that can be a little bit of a pain because panels have different sizes so depending on the manufacturer it has different size different width different length panels and then it's kind of hard to put one if you have a field to put one panel in between two other panels you almost have to start at the end and then go forward um, so that's one of the things you'll run into with metal, but I very rarely see damaged metal weather unless it's from like a hurricane where a tree falls into a house or something like that. Besides that, I barely ever see actual panel damage. It's usually just fasteners, uh, wrong fasteners being installed. So long term with metal, you're getting the best bang for your buck if you're going to own the home long term. If you're re-roofing a house that is an investment property that you're only going to own for a few years, maybe you go with the shingles. So the obvious con of a metal roof is that it's the most expensive type of roofing system. But like I've said earlier in this video, like most things in life, you get what you pay for. So if you want the best, then you have to pay for the best. So you have to put out a little extra money, especially down to get that metal roofing system, but it's gonna save you money long-term. The second biggest con of a metal roofing system is some people don't like the look. They think it's like uh, too industrial or too like commercial looking and so they don't want it on their house. But um, there are a lot of people, especially in the Keys and West Palm and um, down in like Cutler Bay, uh, where metal is becoming trendy now. Kind of like uh, the inside of Chipotle, where you look up and the ceiling is the inside of the metal. That's becoming a trend. So metal is becoming popular. Um, but there are just people who like certain things. So maybe they like tiles better. And uh, especially because metal, you might have oil canning. Um, you can see here some striations in this panel. Uh, the striations help prevent oil canning, which oil canning is uh, an optical illusion where the metal looks dented, even though it's not. It's like kind of like if you look down a road when you're driving and there's nobody else on the road and you look all the way down and it looks like you can see the heat waves coming off the road. That's kind of what oil canning is. It's like a similar uh, optical illusion effect that uh, plays, there's not real dents in the roof. It just looks like there are, it's kind of weird. One of a metal roof is some people always worry about, oh, what about when it rains? You're gonna hear the rain, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you have insulation in your attic, that's not gonna be a problem. You're not gonna really hear it. Other people have told me that the sound of the rain hitting the metal is soothing to them. Um, it, I would say that if you know of a place that has a metal roof, Maybe go during a rainstorm before you buy a metal roof and just listen to see what the sound like, the sound sounds like. Most of the time, it's not as loud as people think it's going to be. It's just like a little uh, pattern, like a little, uh, like tapping your fingers or something like that. 
And um, so it just depends on the person on if that's something that is going to bother you or you can bear with it. Every single topping has a different pro and a different con. So if you want to be cost effective, short term, maybe go shingles. If you're gonna own the house for a long time or the property for a long time and you want to be cost effective, maybe you go metal. Or maybe you just care about the way it looks and you love the look of tiles, then you're gonna go with tile. So it just depends on your goals and what your uh, intent with the property is on what kind of topping that you wanna to put, topping or cap, cap layer that you wanna put on top of your sloped roof.